Hi, I uh, wanted to talk today about binge eating disorder and gastric bypass surgery. Um, I was diagnosed with binge eating disorder about four months ago, so I would say February of 2008, which was two months before my gastric bypass surgery. Um, it was a long road to get to that point. I didn't even know I had binge eating disorder, to be honest with you. I decided the end of 2006 to have gastric bypass surgery, and it took me until January of 2008 to actually get approval from the insurance company. Um, I then had to wait an additional three months till April to have the surgery because I decided to go back to smoking and that's a big no-no at my surgeon's office. So needless to say, I followed the rules and waited 90 days before surgery. Um, but what I had decided was after I got approval and, and I ended up with that 90 day wait period, I really wanted to utilize that those three months to my fullest advantage. And basically the first month, <laughs> you know, I went in last meal syndrome and ate everything under the sun. Once I was down to two months left, that was when I decided to get some help. Um, I knew that the surgery could fix the physical issues that I have with food, but it wasn't going to fix the mental and emotional connection I had with food. I didn't know what my connection was to food. You know, you can look in the mirror every day and not see the zit right on the end of your nose. That's how I felt. I knew I had a problem, but I didn't know what the problem was. And you know, I, I have a sister that had gastric bypass surgery who unfortunately has not been very successful with it. And I've also worked with some people that had the surgery that, again, were not so successful with it. You know, they lost weight and regained. And I refused to be that person. I knew that if I was going to let a surgeon knock me out under anesthesia, cut me wide open, rearrange my intestines for the rest of my life, and I was going to risk, you know, anemia and vitamin deficiency and yada yada, that I was going to do this right. So my insurance actually allows me 50 psychiatric visits a year, uh, $15 copay. So after doing some research, I found at USF in Tampa um, a doctor that specializes in eating disorders. Uh, she happens to be in my insurance's network. Somehow, by the grace of whoever, I got an appointment with this doctor. She, supposedly, she wasn't taking on new patients, but she saw me. And after two hours with her and answering a lot of her questions, um, it turns out that she diagnosed me with binge eating disorder. Now you would assume that if you were diagnosed with an eating disorder that you'd be upset. But I have to say that I was not in the least bit upset. You know you have a problem. You don't know what it is. You don't know how to fix it. You can't even put a finger on it. It's just there. There's just a problem. It's depressing. When somebody gives it a name then if it has a name, that means somebody studied it. And if somebody studied it, that means that enough people have it to warrant the study. And if they've studied it, then there must be a solution to it. So when I got the news of having a binge eating disorder, it actually was quite a relief to me. I can fix this. I, I can go read a book. I can Google it online. I can talk to other people about it. It wasn't a dirty little secret anymore. I have binge eating disorder. Okay, now let's fix it. So this doctor, Dr. Powers at USF says, five things I want you to do. One, I want you to do a one-on-one -on -one therapy with a counselor. Here's a couple names to choose from. Two, go get a nutritionist. Three, go to a support group meeting at this nonprofit facility the Hope House in South Tampa it's for people with eating disorders. Um, there was a group there called the Binge Breakers just for binge eating disorder people. 
Uh, four, come back and see her right before surgery to report how I'm making progress. And five, go have surgery. I don't think I was in the door 10 minutes. Boom, 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 boom. Set up a therapy meeting, set up the nutritionist, set up the group therapy, the whole nine yards. Um, group therapy didn't work out. It wasn't a, a group of people like me. There was an anorexic in there. There was a bulimic in there. There were people who thought they were bingers, but they really had no idea what binging was. Believe me. Um, uh, you know, I felt that I was there more to support them than them to support me, and that's not what I needed at that time. I was about to go under major surgery, and I needed to have my wits about me, and my energy needed to be on me. You know, I'm all for helping people out, but I needed the focus to be on me. So... You know, I didn't do the group therapy. I went the first, but that was it. I called the doctor on the phone, told him I wasn't coming back. Um, saw the nutritionist a few times, learned some mechanics of food, which was very important. Um, and I've been seeing Dr. Milo for the binge eating disorder for the last four months. And what I've learned with binge eating disorder is, you know, you have a bad childhood, you have non-supportive parents, you have bad career choices, and it leads you, all this builds up and leads you to an eating disorder. And when you go through therapy, you basically have to break it back down in the order that, you know, reverse the order that got you to the binge eating. So you got to deal with the binging first, quit the binging, and then break down what got you to that point. So I must say that since, since the uh, therapy started, I haven't had an urge to binge. Even when I had the two months before surgery that I could have physically binged, I didn't binge because I was working so hard. You know, I wanted the surgery so bad. And, you know, now that I've had the surgery, I physically can't binge. Uh, my three biggest things was dub chocolate, cheesesteaks, and pizza. And you put those three items in front of me right now, and I have to tell you, it might smell good, but I couldn't eat it. I'm just, you know, I'm still in the honeymoon period of surgery. I'm only nine weeks post-op. I couldn't eat it. You know what I'm saying? I'm not saying in a year from now I couldn't. I could, and that's the scary thing with binging. Um, but at this point in time... Hello? Okay, sorry about that. Um, anyway, I really haven't the slightest idea where I left off at. Um, I know it was in regards to binging and surgery. Um, I guess I'll just sum it up by saying that, you know, binge eating disorder I don't think ever goes away. I think it's dormant inside of us. And once this honeymoon period is over and I can start consuming more food and I probably get more daring on what I eat, um, I need to make sure that the coping techniques I'm learning now are implemented for the rest of my life because food cannot be the answer to my problems, period. Not drugs, not alcohol, not sex, not gambling, and not food, period. So to anyone out there who also suffers from binge eating disorder, weight loss surgery or not, just binge eating disorder, I, I feel for you, I connect with you, please feel free to message me. I'll share anything that I've learned with you and I highly recommend Dr. Anita Johnston's book, Eating in the Light of the Moon. Good luck.